What's going on guys, Jake Bully with Barbin.com. Today we're back for another lifting shoe comparison video and we're gonna be looking at two popular models, the Adidas Adipower and the Nike Romalios 3. Now you might be sitting there thinking, wait bro, those models have been out for a while. Why are you just now reviewing them? Well, word on the street is that the new Adidas Adipower is gonna be releasing in the next few months and the new Nike Romalios XD are set for pre-order right now. So that being said, with new models comes price cuts in these models. So if you're not down for spending full price on a brand new shoe, these are probably going to be taking a nice price cut in the next couple months, if not already. In this video, we'll be talking about some of the bigger construction differences that come along with each model. I'm going to talk about the size and the fit of each model, the pros, cons that come along with each, and the price. Now let's dive into the construction. In our individual reviews, I dive into the construction a little bit more in depth. So if you want any of those details, I would suggest either Googling Barbend and Adidas Addy Power or Barbend and Nike Romalios 3 for that review. In this, we're gonna pretty much cover just the main ones on the toe, midfoot, and heel between each model. So starting up here on the toe, on the Nike, we have like a more breathable synthetic mesh material. It has a more of a light leather on it. And as you can see, it's pretty maneuverable. And then on the Addy Power, it's a PU coated leather here around. There's some breathability up here with these holes on the toes. And then we have a bigger insert for the tongue itself. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the midfoot section. But all in all, both are pretty sturdy. There's not gonna be a lot of breakdown in each. As you can see, there hasn't been any wear and tear on the lip of the shoe. I haven't had any lipping on either models yet. So that's a positive for durability with each model. Breaking our way to the midfoot. So, as you can see on the Nike Romalios 3, we have one, two, three, four, five, six eyelets that run up. The sixth eyelet up here is right next to the fifth, and more than likely you're not gonna use it, but it is there if you want to. The top two eyelets offer the Nike Flywire, which are these hoops here. These are basically loops that are gonna go under the shoe and connect to the other side over here, and it's supposed to provide a little bit of stability and natural responsiveness. Then, looking at the strap, we have a thicker strap compared to the Nike Romalios 2 that had two singular straps down here and up here that are a little skinnier. The Nike Romalios 3 has more of like a seat belt feeling strap to it. And when you pull it fully tight, it doesn't get close to the ground. So it provides a decent amount of stability for the midfoot. Looking at the Adidas Addy Power midfoot, we have four main eyelets that run up and we have a fifth eyelet back here. And again, that's kind of like the sixth eyelet on the Romalios 3. You may or may not use it. If you do, it could provide a little bit of additional ankle stability. If you have a skinnier ankle, it sits in the shoe. One thing to note about the differences in these models is how much variance there is in terms of tongue. So there's a lot more tongue on the Addy Power down here. This is a huge maneuverable piece down here. And honestly, I thought it kind of affected the stability when trying to get used to these shoes. But once you kind of break them in, you get used to it. And it's not that big of a difference. I like the additional support here on the tongue and it kind of makes up for this big gap down here. But all in all, the stability is going to be pretty good with the shoe. It's just something to kind of keep in mind. And it's something that I'm not the hugest fan of, but I also have a slightly more narrow foot. Making our way to the strap, as opposed to the Romalios 3 that has the strap going across the midfoot that's a little bit thicker, the Addy Power has a single strap up here towards the top. It has some double stitching over here around the leather hoop, so it's going to be pretty durable, similar on this side here. And it's one strap across the top. If you pull it fully tight, it doesn't come really close to hitting the ground, which is a nice feature. You're not going to have any kind of dragging, even when pulling the shoe fully tight. Making our way to the boot of the shoe, the Addy Power definitely has a little bit more padding compared to the Romalios 3. It provides a little bit more cushion, and in terms of causing friction on the Achilles, the Addy Power will probably do a better job at resisting that, especially if you wear low cut socks. Um, the tongue itself here, as you can see, has a little bit of additional reinforced padding on the middle and through the inside of the shoe. And that's a nice feature for providing that nice stable and comfortable feeling with this model. Making our way to the Romalios 3. Definitely a little bit less padding, not uncomfortable, but throwing it out here now, the Nike Romalios XD do have a little bit more beefed up material here and a thicker tongue, which brings us to the tongue of the Romalios 3, which has been a durable pro durability problem for a few athletes and myself included. This is a very thin tongue and it's very prone to ripping. So it's definitely something I would say to keep an eye out for and put on the shoes very carefully if you do and decide to invest in them. This is a very, not, I don't wanna say flimsy tongue, but it's pretty freaking flimsy, and I'm glad that they beefed it up on the Nike Romalios XD. Making our way to the heel. Each heel of the shoe has a TPU layer here. We have the pillars in the Addy Power. We have the honeycomb structure in the Nike Romalios 3. Each heel sits about 0.75 inches, and that's kind of standard for your normal weightlifting shoe. There are some lower and higher models out there, but for the recreational athlete who just needs a generic lifting shoe, 0.75 inches tends to be the best bet. Turning over the shoe, 
We have the honeycomb structure that runs throughout the midfoot and the heel on the Romalios 3. As you can see, you can kind of see a little bit of texture through here. You can see a little bit of the orange on the inside. On the Adidas Addy Power, we have the thicker rubber material, and I'll show you on the side view how that compares to the Romalios 3, but it's pretty grippy. It has a little bit of give back here on the heel, and that's cool because it provides a lot of responsiveness, but the TPU heel provides a lot of stability. I was a big fan of that in the Addy Powers. Flipping over the shoe to look at the outsole thickness, as you can see, the rubber here on the Addy Power is a little bit thicker than the Romalios 3. And in terms of durability, they're both pretty durable, but in my opinion, I think the thinner material over here on the Romalios 3 is a little bit more prone to ripping. I actually had a heel kind of come off on one of my models, and it wasn't the most ideal thing in the world. It didn't really affect the lifting, but again, that could be problematic if it really starts to peel off. The final point I want to cover for the construction section is the signature difference that each company tries to put with their shoe. Now in the Nike Romalios 3, I mentioned this in the midfoot section, but they use their signature flywire material. And again, that's these hoops up here on the top two eyelets that go under the shoe that provide stability and responsiveness. Now the Adidas shoe uses the Adidas torsion system. That's this arch support right here, and the goal of the torsion system is to separate the heel and the toe and provide maneuverability and flexibility in each so you don't feel like you're blocked into one solid little blocky shoe. All in all, those are the main differences between each of the shoes' construction. If you want a little bit more of the nitty-gritty details, then I suggest checking out the individual reviews. But now let's move on to the sizing and fit. Both of these shoes are a size 10, and I'm a size 10 foot. I'm pretty true to size and I wear the same size in every video to kind of give you an idea of how these shoes fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on the Addy Power first, and I'm gonna pull the laces fully tight with the strap to show you guys exactly how the shoe feels, where my foot is landing. And on a side note, I do have a slightly more narrow foot, so I will mention that if I feel any difference in terms of width at the toe box, or if there's a lot of room for that matter, or if I think you should go a little bit wider if you have a wider foot. So fully tight, this is what the Addy Power looks like on my foot. In terms of where it's falling on the shoe itself, I have my toes fully splayed. And as you can see, you could probably see a little bit of movement here on the medial and lateral side. I don't have any issues splaying my toes. It feels pretty comfortable. If anything, there's a little bit more room in this shoe's toe box compared to some of the other models I've tried. Up here on the toe itself, my toe's falling about right there. So I have about a half inch to maybe a full inch of room up here. Now let's put on the Nike Romayos 3. And now one thing to note about this shoe is that it is definitely one of the snugger fitting lifting shoes I've tried on the market. Let's pull this fully tight to give you a full idea of where my foot lies. The shoe string in the Romalios 3 is a little bit beefier than the Addy Power and I'm a fan of that personally. So in terms of sizing for the Nike Romalios 3, I would say you're pretty safe going true to size. It's a little bit more of a snugger fitting shoe, so it's gonna feel kind of tight to begin with. So all in all, I would actually recommend going up a half size if you are a little bit more on the bigger side of your true size foot. It, I don't think you could go wrong, but I definitely wouldn't recommend going a half size down. These do fit a little bit more snug and a little bit more true. Looking at the Adidas Addy Power, there's definitely a little bit more room up here in the toe. So if you are on the smaller end of your foot size, you might benefit with going a half size down or if you are pretty true to size or you're pushing the envelope on your foot size, then true to size would probably be a good bet for you. All right, let's take a moment from reviewing these shoes and talk about something very serious. If you subscribe to Barbin's YouTube channel or you're already subscribed, I thank you for that, you're gonna be entered every month to win a $200 Amazon gift card. That's right, for simply subscribing or being subscribed, you're gonna be entered in to win $200 for Amazon that you can spend on anything you want, whether it be shoes, lifting equipment, gear, supplements, you name it. All right, so now let's talk price. Drum roll, please. With the new models coming out, these shoes are probably gonna decrease a little bit more than what they already have. The Nike Romayos 3 actually already have kind of gone down in price, and you could find them around $130 and $150. That's less than where they started at, which is $200, which is where the new Nike Romayos XD is starting at. For the Addy Power, you could find it around 120, 140, 150, depending on the color scheme you want. Some of the new, newer color schemes are a little bit more, so around like 180, 200, but that's gonna kind of depend on where you find the shoe at. If the Addy Power is actually do release in the next few months, then they might go down a little bit more, so it might be almost worth waiting a little bit if you wanna get the Addy Power at an even more decreased price. But again, the prices are gonna vary depending on what retail outlet you go through. But all in all, I think 130, 150 for the Nike Romayos 3 and around 140 for the Addy Power are pretty good bets. All right, so now let's talk about two pros that come along with each model. We'll start with the Adidas Addy Power. 
My first pro that comes along with this model is the Adidas torsion system. So this is the Adidas signature move in this shoe and I like it. It provides a lot of comfort for the toes and the heel. You never really feel limited and you don't feel like you're walking on a block like you can with other shoes that have these TPU heels and midfoots. The second pro that I feel comes along with the Addy Power is that these shoes have been on the market for a few years and you very rarely see things about the PU coated leather breaking down or the TPU heel cracking. So I think they're ability to maintain their stature on the market and really stand the test of time is a good sign for durability. So they are gonna be a long lasting shoe. Moving on to the Nike Romalios 3. So my first pro that comes along with the shoe is the weight. These shoes come with two different insoles. One's a little bit stiffer, one's a little bit softer. The softer insole gives the shoe a weight of about 13 ounces. The harder insole gives the shoe a weight of about 15 ounces. So if you have slow foot turnover on the platform, I think these shoes are a good weight for you and they're not gonna slow you down at any point of your lifting. My second pro with the shoe is how they kind of feel. So I have a more narrow foot and I like a more athletic feeling shoe. And the Romalios 3, in my opinion, are one of the best bets in terms of lifting shoes to give you that feeling. Now, that might not be the case for everyone. So if you have a wider foot, you might not like that kind of limiting tight feeling. But if you have a more narrow foot and you like how Nikes feel normally, especially like tighter cross training shoes or any kind of athletic build shoe, I think you're gonna like the Nike Romalios 3. So now let's talk cons of the Addy Power and the Romalios 3. So my biggest con that comes along with the Addy Power, and I mentioned this in the construction section, is kind of how it's limited here with the lacing. There's only five laces that run up and four that you're really probably gonna only really use. That leaves a lot of room down here by the toe and like right towards the end of the midfoot. And for me personally, I have a slimmer foot, so this feels kind of off-putting. The shoes are very comfortable, they're very stable, and they do fit well when you pull them fully tight. But it's kind of off-putting for me, and I would consider that a con. If you have a wider foot, you're definitely gonna like that. So for you, it's probably a pro. So the biggest downfall that comes along with the Nike Romalios 3 is the durability of the tongue. If you're gonna buy one of the models now that's kind of dropped in price with the new model coming out, I would say be very attentive to how you're putting the shoe on and make sure you're always pulling on the tongue with equal amounts. I could probably tear this tongue right now if I really wanted to. So all in all, those are my two cons that come along with each model. They're gonna be pretty individual based on the user. The one that's not so much individual is the Nike Myos 3, and that's just something you gotta keep in mind if you're trying to buy this model. And that wraps up my review of the Adidas Addy Power and the Nike Romalios 3. With new models coming out in each line, we might be seeing an even more sharper price decrease than we already have with each model. So they could be good bets if you're trying to save a little bit of money. Both shoes are pretty solid and they're gonna come down to your individual preferences and needs in terms of what you want. For more review detail on each shoe, make sure to check out our individual reviews down in the description or Google Barbend and Adidas Addy Power or Barbend and Nike Romalios 3.